the murder of two Japanese hostages by the extremist group ISIS or ISIL has caused heightened interest in Japan's crisis management system. It is a great honor to invite today Mr. Kuni Miyake, Canon Institute of Global Studies Research Director and Foreign Policy Institute President. When at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Mr. Miyake served as Director of the Japan-US Security Treaty Division, Minister of the Embassy of Japan in China and Iraq, and Deputy Director General of the Middle Eastern and African Affairs Bureau. Considering the growing destabilization of the international situation, Mr. Miyake will share his views on the challenges facing Japan's crisis management system. Today's briefing will be conducted in English only. Before we listen to what uh, Mr. Miyake has to say, please don't forget to turn your cell phones to silent mode. Thank you. Then, Mr. Miyake, please. I have to do it first. <laughs> Very good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. This is Kuni Miyake. Um, today I talk about uh, not Japan's crisis management. Uh, I'm talking about my own view on the if there's any crisis management in this country. Um, first of all, let me uh, uh, introduce you what 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 I am, and I, I I'm sure. You know a little bit about myself. I was a uh, uh, minister at the Japanese embassy in Baghdad back in 2004 when uh, 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 several uh, Japanese citizens were kidnapped in, in Iraq. And uh, I know a little bit about the operation. And uh, of course, I have. Uh, uh, some uh, 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 pieces of information I cannot disclose, but I do my best to explain to you what uh, uh, really happened uh, uh, for the past few weeks in this country. I can talk about uh, ISIL for hours, but the probably you're not interested in that. And you've been following uh, the, uh, the, uh, the organization for four years, so maybe probably I should um, focus on what, not what happened in the Middle East, but what happened in my country. So, in a, in a nutshell, first of all, the on first thing I can say is that this incident is finally 9-11 uh, equivalent for Japan, as I was quoted uh, somewhere in a newspaper. It truly is, because I, as I told you, I was in uh, 2004 in Baghdad. And um, in May, I think it was April, three Japanese, young Japanese were kidnapped in Fallujah. And uh, fortunately, they were released in eight days. Um, I was uh, coincidentally in Tokyo, and uh, I went to Jordan where we established the, uh, what they call uh, front line sort of headquarters or whatever the Japanese government operations. And then, um, fortunately, uh, as I said, the three were released in Baghdad. And then two Japanese journalists were killed in uh, a place called the Mahmoudia, the southern uh, outskirt of Baghdad. It's uh, called, in the middle of the, uh, what they call uh, uh, Triangle of Death um, among the uh, Baghdad, the Fallujah, and the Mahmoudiyah. It wasn't a good place anyway to visit back in 2004. Then, finally, in October, uh, we lost another uh, young Japanese in Baghdad. His name is Mr. Koda, Shosei Koda, and who was kidnapped and beheaded by the organization called, at that time, uh, if my memory is correct, uh, Al-Qaeda in Rafadain. Rafadain means two great rivers in Arabic. And he, his uh, uh, death was videotaped. 
and I was uh, Deputy Director General at the Japanese uh, Foreign Ministry for Middle Eastern Affairs, and I was the person who briefed the then Chief Cabinet Secretary on the video that morning. So I vividly still remember. So the point is this. this it was the 9-11 for Japan back in 2004. Why? Because Japan was targeted, intentionally targeted, and the citizen, its citizens was kidnapped and beheaded, as it happened uh, in January. So people say, well, we, 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 Japan became a target for the first time. Oh, Abe did this, Abe did that. Oh my God, that's not the case. Japan has been the target of Al-Qaeda and its uh, outsprings, I would say, or uh, derivatives, including uh, the uh, ISIL, for more than a decade. Uh, uh, Osama bin Laden uh, talked about Japan as early as in 2001 as part of the crusade. So we. It was, the October 2004 incident was, or should have been, a wake-up call. But we didn't wake up. Why? Because at that time, I vividly remember those three uh, Japanese young people came back, you know, released, came back, and they faced uh, uh, very strong criticism that, okay, you are idiots, you went there, it's a dangerous place, it's your own responsibility. So, but that was the famous last word which really ended the discussion. The discussion we really needed at that time. Uh, it's about, it's a discussion about how we uh, better, we could better save the lives of the Japanese citizens abroad. Because we were already targeted in 2004. So that argument, that criticism of your own responsibility really killed the discussion, discontinued the discussion, unfortunately. So we didn't wake up, and a decade have passed. And in the Algeria 2013, we were targeted again. Um, then we lost 10 lives of the Japanese citizens. But we didn't wake up. It was about the Japanese corporation's crisis management issue. But it's not. Japan wasn't the target. So this was the first time. Oh my god, it's, n it's not the case. Unfortunately, we should have waken up in 2004, which we didn't. And we didn't in 2013, and finally, this is a wake-up call, and we woke up. And this is a real 9-11 for us. It happened, a similar 9-11 happened to France uh, two weeks earlier. So this is the case. We are facing the same kind of uh, entity which was born as early as in 2004. It was uh, right after the Iraq war. And um, I can talk about uh, ISIL a lot. And this is not Islam. This is much more Iraqi than Islam. But I can go into details if you have some questions about it. I'm not going into details about the nature of uh, ISIL. But rather, I'd like to talk about the, our crisis management system. So I was puzzled um, a few weeks ago that we, when we witnessed a similar kind of criticism, you know, that two guys went to Syria, which is one of the most dangerous places in on, on the earth. So why did they go there? So then right. It, it was their own responsibility. That was not as loud as, that kind of criticism was not as loud as in 2004. But still there was, there were some criticisms. But but more, uh, another kind of criticism is uh, Abe did it all. 
it was obvious fault. Why he went there, and why he did uh, make a speech, uh, deliver a speech in Cairo, and why did he fi use the word fight, ISIL? And I said, give me a break. See, um, it's, it's a domestic politics, and I understand that. But based on my experience, uh, empirically speaking, first of all, the two uh, unfortunate uh, uh, Japanese citizens were taken hostage as early as in, in uh, August last year. And of course, you know, there's a huge uh, ter terror, uh, terror industry which is going on in that part of the world. You have kidnappers, you have movers, you have keepers, you have sellers, there's a market. Then, of course, they all end, end up in the uh, ISIL or ISIS. So I don't know who, who took them. I don't know who sold them to ISIL, but it was a matter of time. So they had ample time before uh, they prepare the um, the uh, n their tactics, I would say, which would start uh, sometime in January. Abe was going there, and uh, he will visit Israel. Oh, it's, it's a, there's a golden opportunity to take advantage of. So, unfortunately, it's so difficult. I I I have to be very careful in saying this, but uh, I was I was shocked when I when I saw the video and on the 20, 20th of January, because those two Japanese uh, citizens were dressed in orange, and that is not a good, good news. I knew that. Uh, there's only one exception uh, to the rule, that those who were in orange uh, may not return. There's only one exception so far. The British journalist who, uh, I would say, I don't want to criticize him because he has to survive. And he's now helping uh, ISIL for good reasons, probably. I, I don't know. I don't want to talk about it. But uh, anyway, there's only one exception to the rule so far. So it was already determined. And unfortunately, the video time is their party time. Very unfortunate. So they knew what's going to happen, and they were determined to do it, and they did it, as probably planned in advance. So whether Shinzo Abe uh, went to Cairo or not, whether he uses used the word fight ISIL or not, it doesn't matter. That was my uh, uh, assessment. Uh, you may have some questions, and I'm ready to answer your questions later. Uh, the FPC asked me to uh, finish my uh, presentation within 30 minutes and take as many fr questions as possible. So I, I would do that. So, but I, having said that, I don't like uh, the criticism of Abe's responsibility or uh, the criticism of their own responsibility. Neither uh, 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 of them uh, is, is, is relevant uh, to this uh, 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 tragedy. I would say uh, it's time for us to start thinking about unthinkables. Because terrorism is globalized, is being globalized. It's not the product of uh, one corner or one sector or segment of the Middle East anymore. The hatred and whatever violence or they have uh, in one part of the Middle East is now uh, shared by potential terrorists all over the world simultaneously and sometimes amplified not only shared, but amplified by those people. So there's no uh, sanctuary uh, uh, for us anymore. And we should have 
reached that conclusion 11 years ago. But it's not too late for us to, to uh, reconsider uh, the, our measures to help us to uh, save or protect the lives and properties of the Japanese citizens abroad and at home. You never know. So this is uh, my conclusion. And unfortunately, the, our crisis management system, if there's any, is still in the process of uh, improvement. And I can show you one, two slides. Uh, this is the uh, old national security uh, or crisis management system. As you see, there's a uh, prime minister, and then you have a chief cabinet secretary and two deputies. And in the past, until uh, two years ago, there's uh, only one crisis management officer in the chief uh, in the uh, prime minister's office. He's a police guy and he is in charge of the crisis management. And Intel services will help, help him. But what about the national security policy? Now, people d don't understand. Uh, I'm sure you, you, you do, but uh, people often don't miss the point. I mean, the difference between crisis management and national security policies. See, in the past, Ministry A briefs the Prime Minister directly, independently, without coordinating with any other ministries or agencies. Okay, if I were the Prime Minister, all of a sudden I got a brief briefing, I say, oh my God, I have to make a decision sometimes on the spot. They do the same to the chief cabinet secretary. That's fine. But ministry B or agency B or whatever does something similar, but completely independently. Uh, not at the same time, but separately. Or ministry C may do it. They do differently. There's no coordination. So it uh, increases the burden on the politicians. You know, they are not foreign policy experts, but they have to make a decision uh, all by themselves sometimes. Bec but, uh, but those policies are not fully coordinated. So now we have a national security uh, Council and National Security Secretariat. So crisis management is not foreign policy. Crisis management is damage control in a nutshell. It's a logistical thing. It's a master's, of course, uh, work of law enforcement, logistical uh, arrangements to minimize the damage. This is the crisis management, in my view. It has nothing to do with NSC. National Security Council, the national security policy, is the uh, combination of important foreign and of defense policies. And uh, policy making, planning, coordina coordination, and implementation. This is the National Security Council. So I was, I was surprised to hear, and I don't remember who said this, okay, we have two hostages, Japanese, okay, we need NSC. I said, why? We don't need NSC. First we need is the crisis manager. He has to um, analyze the situation and do his best to uh, protect the lives of the hostage or minimize the danger to them. So these are two different functions. And don't mix it up. Mixing up means you get confused. Then other uh, people in this country 
are still confused about the role of the NSC or crisis manager and the role of the intelligence services. They have no idea because we don't have a real intelligence service, external intelligence service. Intelligence services are producers of intelligence. And National Security Council or the crisis manager are consumers of, the intel of intelligence. So intelligence people do not discuss policies. And National Security Council people make policies based on their own analysis of the pieces of intelligence they, they, they got from the intelligence services. So if, if, you know, these three entities are all different. They have different functions and different responsibilities. So unfortunately, in this country, still, even the journalists don't understand the difference among the three. That's why the uh, issues are so uh, confusing these days. So some people say, okay, this is the uh, um, hostage, uh, Japanese hostage issue in, in the Middle East. Okay, so we need to use self-defense forces to rescue them. Oh, this is, a, is it the part of the uh, expanded uh, uh, role of the uh, uh, armed forces, Japanese armed forces, to wage a war or uh, act of uh, self-defense? This is nonsense to me, okay? Basically, what we are working on is the law enforcement policing issues when, when it comes to the protection of Japanese lives abroad. Unless we go to war. We don't go to war. We just rescue them. And we just want to protect the lives of the Japanese citizens abroad, as we do in domestically. So the confusion uh, uh, is now about the roles of the self-defense forces and the role of the uh, government or the measures to protect the Japanese citizens abroad. I think this is uh, big, big confusion, and I, we should carefully avoid some of those. So what should we do? Um, unfortunately, we have a lot to do because we've been so safe and we've been so lucky. We were surrounded by waters, so it's much easier to protect ourselves against the uh, potential enemies or terrorists or attackers or kidnappers. So uh, I was in Jakarta, for example, uh, in the middle of the crisis. And uh, I went to uh, the Philippines as well. And all of, every time my vehicle was thoroughly searched, investigated, looked into uh, from the bottom to the top. Then when I entered the door, of course my luggage bags are all checked. This is a matter of course, uh, uh, I mean, in a natural thing to do in there. Uh, but here, when I came back to Tokyo, nothing happens. And I was invited to so many TV stations, or radio stations, NHK, and I, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. Nobody checked me. Nobody checked my baggage. Nobody checked my car. How safe it is. I mean, hope this will continue forever. But it's not, it's, it, I think it's a matter of time. You know, because uh, we have some Muslims. You know how many Muslims we have in this country? I'm not, talk I'm not demonizing Muslims at all. On the contrary, there are about 100,000 Muslims in this country already. And mo many of them, or I would say most of them, are good Muslims. But at the same time, I cannot preclude the possibility that one of them, a few of them, might be sleeping cells, might be homegrown,
terrorists? You never know. Given the uh, 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 information revolution, anything could go, anything happens. What's, what's happening in, 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 in Europe? What's happening in the Middle East? So we cannot be the exception anymore. So first thing we should do is to change our mindset. Think unthinkables now. I hope I'm wrong. And if I'm wrong, I'm happy. And those measures may not be necessary. But if I'm right, then those measures may help uh, minimize, if not completely uh, prevent uh, those uh, terrorist acts from uh, happening. And then I propose uh, an establishment of uh, uh, a real global standard external intelligence service, uh, which requires two things. Um, one is a good group of uh, group of good analysts, and another group of good operators. You have to have analysts and operators at the same time if you want to have a real good, really good intelligence service. Uh, we don't have it yet, um, and this discussion should start soon sooner rather than later, but uh, we shouldn't uh, make it uh, a sort of an uh, interagency, sort of a rivalry-related uh, 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 discussions. Uh, we have good analysts in the foreign ministry, for example. Well, we may have good operators in the police agency, but none of them, none of the two can build the best intelligence service alone. They have to work together because we need to have a good combination of, uh, of analysts and, and operators. And operators will do uh, information gathering abroad and uh, we have to protect them. How can we do that? They may risk themselves. There's so many, so many things to do in order to have a good uh, intelligence service. It's a long way to go, but I think it's time to start uh, this kind of discussion. And finally, um, before uh, I take start taking questions, um, as I said, we need this system uh, to function uh, better. Um, My experience uh, for the past few weeks uh, tells me that uh, probably there's a not uh, there's still a confusion even inside the Japanese government for good reasons because uh, this is not a perfect case for crisis management or protection of the Japanese citizens. It's also related to uh, international uh, uh, security environment, especially in the Middle East. The uh, 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 ISIL, uh, ISIS is, is, is part of, part of the uh, international politics, unfortunately. So, of course, the National Security Council should be involved. But who takes the lead? And who is responsible for what? That should be carefully looked into and carefully uh, defined. Otherwise, you know, this case, uh, unfortunately, we lost two lives. But this is not the end. This is the beginning. And we have to prevent, uh, or at least minimize, the impact of the uh, second, or third, or fourth incident like this. It happened, it started in 10, 10 years, 11 years ago, 2004. That means that will continue, no matter what name, under what name they, they call themselves. It will, it will go on, unfortunately. So finally, uh, uh, it's uh, uh, 
it's an issue of the balance uh, between the basic human rights, including a right to leave the nation, uh, right to travel abroad, uh, right to uh, uh, or freedom of speech, or freedom of expression. These issues are all involved uh, when it comes to the uh, issue of how we protect our citizens' lives or our properties. Uh, in the past, we didn't have to think about this seriously. But in other nations, uh, these, those issues are already being discussed. And it's so difficult to uh, maintain the balance between the two. How the, 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 the bottom line is this. How can we restrict, or how should we, or whether should we restrict the part of the uh, uh, freedom of expression or movement uh, as basic human rights in order to uh, maximize the safety of the Japanese citizens abroad and at home. So uh, just a, a few days ago, I remember, about a week ago, um, uh, the Japanese foreign ministry nullified uh, a passport of the, uh, the um, uh, uh, Japanese photographer who uh, explicitly uh, stated that he would go to Syria. So it was the um, uh, uh, implementation of the uh, um, passport law of Japan but of course, this involves the issue of how we maintain the balance between the public safety and the basic human rights. And this may have to be discussed as well in order to protect the lives of the Japanese citizens abroad. You know, if you go to Europe, if you go to the United States, if you go to uh, the Middle East, of course, and if you go to uh, Southeast Asia, things are happening already. And I hope I'm wrong, but this may happen in this country as well. So this should be the wake-up call, and this is the 9-11 for us. But of course, we shouldn't overreact, because we have been the target since 2004. So we should behave ourselves. We should uh, have a, a very serious uh, uh, but uh, uh, unheated discussion about our safety uh, uh, and and the uh, protection of the properties and lives of the Japanese citizens. So it's about 30 minutes, and I'd like to take uh, questions from now. Thank you very much for your presentation, Mr. Miyake. Uh, now we'd like to open the floor to questions. Uh, we will receive questions from the foreign press. Uh, but one question at the time, please. If you have a question, please raise your hand. And when you are selected, uh, please wait for a microphone and give us your name and affiliation before you uh, ask your question. So any questions? Jason. Uh, Jean Lejean from the FM TV and the RTL from France. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, you say it's 9-11 for, for Japan, and I would like to ask you, isn't it used as 9-11 by Japan? Hmm? Isn't it used? Isn't it used as a 9-11 by Japan to formulate new policies? And as you talk about, for example, analysts and operators, what manpower do you have to be able to cover such missions? Because so far, it hasn't been very successful. You don't have many troops abroad. You don't have many diplomats abroad, especially in this region of Middle East or Africa, compared to some other countries, such as mine. So how can you have a reaction, a manpower, to assume those duties? Uh, are you talking about the uh, external intelligence service or...? or yeah, when you, you talk when you talk about the analysts and operators that you need that Japan right. has not to gather yes. information. It takes a decade at least. It takes a decade to have a real uh, professional uh, intelligence services uh, in any country. 
uh, no, we have we don't have enough experts. Uh, unfortunately, we are not a monotheistic world. So, uh, biblical or monotheistic uh, teaching and uh, situation is is new to the many Japanese. It takes a long, long time to uh, uh, train. Uh, uh, the uh, operators and analysts as well uh, 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 about the Middle East. We have some 100 Arabic language officers in the Japanese Foreign Ministry, but they are diplomats. They're not necessarily uh, analysts. Of course, the uh, on-the-job training will give them, will make them, some of them, the wonderful analysts. Uh, but uh, Basically, it takes uh, at least a decade. Then it's not only that. Uh, if you have, if you recruit 100, I would say analysts or future analysts or future operators, I can say only 10% will pass the test in 10 years. See, because I'm talking about real professional intelligence service. Not the imitation, or not the, uh, not the kids, kids, kids toy. We are, I'm talking about ser seriously. Then it takes decades, and we need many manpowers, and only a few, the best and brightest, will survive. And but we have to take care of the rest, in order to maintain the organization. And we need to have professionals at the top, which we don't have. Many. We have some, but not many. It's a collective sort of a human network of analysts and operators. And in the, one of the most dangerous circumstances in the, on the earth. That's what I'm talking about. So of course, we don't, we don't have it. We have, potentially we have some people, but we need money, we need time, and we need talents to have those organizations like MI6 or uh, CIA or at that level. We need a lot of resources. Other questions? Yes. <coughs> Hello, um, I'm Josiane Rossel from the Canadian Embassy. I would like to thank you for your presentation. Um, I had a question. Um, from my understanding of your presentation, you're very careful oh, to separate. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Yes. I like to give a priority for foreign press oh. people first. Oh. So la later, maybe. I'm okay. sorry. Any question from the press? Yes. I get back to you. Thank you. Hello. Uh, my name is Gonzalo Robledo. I work for the uh, Spanish newspaper of uh, Colombia. I was born in Colombia. And I would like to talk about some incident that happened uh, years back in 96, I think. 96. Uh, in Peru, in Lima. Do you remember they were uh, kidnapped or they have this hostages crisis in Lima? Uh, more than 400 people were kept mm -hmm. in the residence of the ambassador. Mm -hmm. And uh, I work on that issue. Oh, I, I made a documentary program about that. And I interviewed some of, of the Japanese diplomats. Mm -hmm. And one of them who quit the foreign ministry after the incident uh, told me that uh, we need, he said, we Japanese need an intelligence service. Mm -hmm. What you said now, that mm -hmm. was 20 years ago. Yes. They said, we do need because uh, we are unprotected. He said, the day of the party, they were having this celebration of the emperor's birthday. That night, the only intelligence he did was calling the American embassy and asking them, how is the situation in Lima now? And the American officer said, go ahead. Nothing is happening tonight, so it's good. You can go ahead with the party. Mm. And this was what happened after that. They were like about uh, three months kept mm -hmm. inside the embassy. So uh, the wake up call, I think, was long before. And I think uh, if you're familiar with South America, there are many in my country, Colombia, more than three or four Japanese have been killed uh, by the guerrillas. So the wake-up call has been 
like many times. Mm -hmm. So now I think, uh, going back to the question of the, my colleague of, of the French, um, this is like the chance now, because the political situation of Japan is like going more to the conservative side, it's easier to change or they want to change the constitution. So that's why we are mixing this, this. national security and crisis management exactly. is getting together. That's the reason why exactly. in the general people who are not familiar with the politics of mm -hmm. Japan, we, as you say, we do understand, but if you look from outside, uh, the situation is Mr. Abe wants to change the constitution. Uh, we are not going to go into why the reasons, but he wants to change the constitution to, to have an army and to have all what uh, you need or what you want to, to say, right? So? So uh, just uh, going back to this, uh, is this situation a chance for Japan? The, the political situation uh, is a chance for Japan to uh, get army, get intelligence. Is that being used like that? No, you know, first of all, we have armed forces. We don't call it military yet. And probably we may, we may change the constitution to, to call it the military. But it, the, 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 it's, it's armed forces anyway, under civilian control. So uh, this uh, is an issue of uh, constitutional amendment. It has nothing to do with these measures to protect the lives of the Japanese citizens abroad. Um, I don't want to mix, I don't want to relate the issue of uh, constitutional amendments with this uh, uh, sort of a uh, uh, long-term sort of a overdue homework to do. You know, I was in the uh, uh, North America Bureau when, when Saddam uh, invaded Kuwait back in 1990. And that, was a, that should have been a wake-up call again, but uh, we didn't wake up. So since then, the like-minded uh, people, uh, I mean, cons serious people, have been talking about collective self-defense, talking about defense spending increase, talking about more uh, security cooperation uh, among like-minded nations. So these are nothing to do with Shinzo Abe. These are the homeworks of Japan since the end of the Cold War. So they, they, these are unfinished homeworks. And this is one, one of them. This is one of them. Having a robust professional intelligence service, external intelligence service, that is a homework. It has nothing to do with Shinzo. It's my understanding. Because he didn't bring this issue to the political scene. This issue has been there, as you said, since 20 years ago. So why do you relate this issue with the Shinzo's policy? Or yes, he has his own idea. He has his own agenda. But they are different from these uh, issues of uh, uh, to protect the Japanese lives abroad. So I, I take your point. We should have waken up uh, 20 years ago. Uh, the Peruvian experience was, was another tragedy. Uh, but unfortunately, we didn't wake up. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, I'm Kirk Spitzer, American journalist. I work primarily for Time Magazine. What's your best case scenario? Do you think that we can, that Japan will really will have this um, this serious discussion that you you would like us to, you would like them to have? Do you think that will really happen? What do you think will come out of that discussion if there is one? And what is the very best case that you could make of uh, of how this situation is resolved two years down the road, five, ten? Tell us what the best case is. In 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 the future. Yes. Well, no country has done perfectly well to this kind of issue. What happened to the, the U.S. government, British government, French government, 
European governments. You know, people deny, but some people might have paid, paid the ransom. Okay, some people refused. Definitely this time, the Japanese government refused, to the best of my knowledge. Some Europeans get those hostages back, okay? And they might have, or they may not have paid the ransom. Doesn't matter, but anyway, they did it, stop the terrorist attack against France, for example. No, it never stops. Because what they are, you know, the, the point is that the, this kind of uh, tactical or, or technical measures is also important to minimize the damage or, or loss. But this is a tactical, uh, sort of a technical uh, mm, mm, measures or strategy or tactics. But we need political strategy as well. And unfortunately, it is so difficult to come up with that because people always misunderstand the main real objective of ISIL. You know, do they want money or do they want the hostage back or do they want recruiting young warriors from Europe? No, none of the above. They want to fight. They want to continue fighting. They want continue jihad to have a caliphate state. That's their belief. And this is the, their strategy. So in order to really stop the, the movement, we have to have a political strategy to come up with or to cope with this kind of belief. And this is not easy. This is not easy. Uh, we are bit uh, in a better position because uh, we, ha we don't have history issue in the Middle East, fortunately. But it doesn't help a lot. We are not part of the crusade, but unfortunately, they are uh, facing uh, criticism from the whole international community, which Japan is part of it. So I, I would say what's going to happen in five, ten years, even if we have a robust intelligence service as the Europeans or Americans have, probably we will continue to be facing similar problems like, like, like we face now. Uh, we w well our lives should, could, be, could be slightly safer, but still that kind of uh, uh, Salafist jihadism prevails, uh, it's not going to change uh, any. And the real problem, I don't want to talk about this because I don't want to demonize any, anybody, but this is because the Iraqis and Syrians cannot rule themselves for good reasons. I'm not blaming them, but unfortunately they are failed states. And there are sanctuaries for the terrorists. And unless they don't govern themselves perfectly, there are areas for such group of people. And they stay there. And they multiply there. This is, this is, this is a real problem. And unfortunately, that, that's something we cannot do a lot about. Because that's their country. That's their nation. And that's their homeland. And we can't do that unless they govern themselves. Okay? Anybody? Is there no question from the foreign press? Uh, oh. Yes. Can we wait for the microphone? That, uh, there is an intelligence service, right, in Japan? There is a CIA, Japanese CIA, we something like? We don't have. You don't have, but you have something like within the Justice Ministry, right? Uh, and the Justice like Ministry, they have internal. A, what they call, what they call Public Security Examination Commission. 
Okay, so they gather information. Hmm? They gather information. Uh, they do intelligence. They do. They do intelligence. Yes. And they are not able to go ahead and, for example, go out and gather intelligence for this future CIA that you're dreaming of. Well, we have no James Bond, first of all. Okay. And uh, secondly, we do not have a legal framework for those operators to operate potentially illegally in their, ho in their countries abroad. Uh, diplomats uh, are not, don't abide by the domestic laws and regulations, but we respect domestic laws and regulations. So by definition, diplomats cannot be an operator. The Japanese operators, if there's any, uh, are not immune to uh, such uh, sort of uh, 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 legal responsibility to the best of my knowledge. So they avoid doing such activities, I'm sure. Or whether they can risk themselves, as I did in Iraq. You know, I was a diplomat. I, I tried to respect the law, laws and regulations of Iraq under Saddam. That's why I can say this now. But I survived. I did, I did legal activities. And I, I know another, I don't want to name the na country, uh, another embassy has uh, uh, another diplomat who did uh, something similar to mine. And he was narrowly killed. I survived. I don't know why. So, but we don't do that. Diplomats don't do that. The other <laughs> intelligence services, I don't think they do that under the uh, Japanese uh, legal framework uh, 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 concerning the uh, intelligence activities abroad. We don't have the legal uh, uh, framework to, 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 to allow or to uh, 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 make it successful, to the best of my knowledge. Would you also change the constitution to do that? No, I don't think so. No? I don't think so. You don't need it or you, you no, don't think it will you change? don't need it. You don't need it. We can so do it that. So be, it could be done. We can do that because we, we, we are not talking about war. It's my interpretation, of course, but we are not talking about war. We are talking about the measures to protect our, the lives of the Japanese citizens. Okay? But of course, if the robust professional uh, 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 intelligence services could contribute to other uh, 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 objectives as well, but I, I don't think that uh, having a robust Intelligence service itself is uh, unconstitutional. It's my interpretation. Don't quote me, please. Thank you, sir. <coughs> yeah, Lejean again from French TV. Uh, one more quick question. Yes. What do you explain the silence since August last year? I remember I had when Yuka was arrested, uh, kidnapped, sorry. I had a lunch with one of the policy makers of Gaimu Show and with an Arabic friend of mine, and we were trying to find out ways. And uh, he seemed lost. And I, my question is, what did you do since August to try to have Su Yukawa saved? Uh, are you talking about myself? Yeah, Japan, are you talking about Japanese the Japanese authority. government? Yeah, yeah, your country. And if that's the, the, uh, you're talking about the Japanese government, I do not know. I do not know. Your opinion I'm about it? I can guess. Well. I don't want to guess, but then you you won't you won't uh, uh, allow me to be silent. So I have to say something. Okay. It depends on how the f family members uh, reacted to the issue. Did they re if they had reported the issue to the uh, specific governmental agency? The governmental agency might have addressed that issue. 
if I were the officer in charge, I will look into that. But what information do we have? I think the, the information is very much limited. There are many, many people are talking about uh, different uh, stories about that that I do not know. I cannot confirm that. But uh, if I had known that there was a uh, request or report from the family members of the victim, uh, the Japanese government or whatever, whatever agency or whatever department won't be silent. Of course, they will deal, deal with it. But uh, given the limited amount of information and the distance from here to wherever in Syria, you never know. And uh, as I said that the earlier, at the beginning, I do not know who took the uh, Yukawa as hostage. I have no idea. I saw the video, and it probably it would be. Uh, uh, Miraculous if, if you could tell what kind of people uh, kidnapped him as early as in August or even September. And uh, in the case of, uh, of uh, Goto, um, uh, he left uh, Japan in October. And uh, there must have been some contact, reportedly. So I don't know where uh, his wife reported that issue to, that incident to. And then if somebody know, knew about it, definitely they will start whatever, whatever activities required. But there always a limit. And uh, other than that, I cannot. Uh, I cannot just speculate any further. I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm not in charge. Quinter-san, one more. Siegfried Nil, freelancer from Germany. What does the government do now? Do they have a? Will they? develop a kind of a crisis management or a kind of intelligence service? Or does the government only use the hostage crisis to follow his uh, uh, agenda in changing the constitution in paragraph 9 and to, to uh, make a, to find a broader role for the government? I think th your question itself is biased <laughs> from the beginning. Yeah. This is not a fair uh, neutral question. And uh, my answer is, uh, of course, at this moment, the information is limited, and the uh, uh, Japanese government's ability to address this issue is limited. So uh, the only thing I can say is to get more information as much as they can and do their best to prevent the second or third incident like this, period taking advantage of this issue for another purpose? That's a different question. Any other questions? Any other questions? If there's no question from the press members, uh, I'd like to listen to the question. And if it's an embassy, I have to ask the lady, lady. first. <coughs> Apologies, wasn't my, my intention to... Uh, still on the priority. Um, my question was related to the fact that you were careful to distinguish crisis management from foreign policy in that particular case. So I was wondering if we could have, I could have your thoughts on uh, Minister Kishida's announcement on Tuesday of a tripular foreign policy related to the murder of Japanese hostages. Uh, Mr. Kishida's uh, statement? A tripillar foreign policy, which was announced on Tuesday, Tri which was uh, named um, regarding, and uh, in, in clear link with the, the murder of Japanese hostages. Tri tripillar? Uh, yes, a foreign policy for the Middle East linked to the oh. murder of hostages. Oh, he said that. I'm sorry, I, I'm not following. Uh, Apologies. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, you know, um, the as I said, uh, the bottom line is the lack of uh, governance in one of some of the uh, countries in the Middle East. So uh, we will continue our 
best to help or contribute to the nation building or human resources building or humanitarian uh, support for those, uh, those people who suffer uh, from those activities as well as who suffer uh, even since before. So uh, this is a non-military uh, 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 contribution, and we will continue that. I don't think that, uh, as somebody said, uh, uh, we should take advantage of this to, to justify whatever uh, more uh, robust activity in the Middle East. I think it's, it's uh, 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 you know, I have, I have been dealing with the Middle East for the past 37 years. And, and Middle East is not a place for Japan to use force. That's too too dangerous, and it's not rewarding, you know, because our physical presence, our existence, uh, uh, won't be uh, threatened because of the distance. It's not East Asia, or it's not in this part of the world. So we may we should have a different uh, set of policies, of course, and. Uh, we have no capability to do that, and we don't want to have that kind of capability anyway. You know, you know the people there. If you use force and get involved in that kind of activities, they'll be endless. Look at the American pol US policy. Look at the French policy. They're all involved in militarily, and they never get out. We don't want to repeat that. Unless unless we have to uh, uh, protect uh, lives of our citizens, we may have to transport some of them from one place to another. That's not a military engagement. It is, uh, it is a policing uh, policy or measures. So we should stay away. Personally, I, I would stay away from military engagement in that part of the world. I, I think that's the best way to do. Yes. I'm Chashe Duaffer of Syrian Arab Republic. Uh, thank you for uh, speaking about uh, this situation, and I would uh, like to take this chance and also to convey the, uh, our condemnation, our government condemnation uh, for beheading the two Japanese citizens, and also to uh, convey the, our government sympathy. Uh, for the family and people of uh, Japan, actually. Um, uh, I would say that, uh, you know, the issue is if we can't uh, analyze the situation correctly, the problem is we can't find any solution. So, of course, I am not against Japan to find uh, uh, any solution to protect uh, its uh, citizens. However, the issue in our area, especially you, are, you spoke already about uh, Syria and Iraq failed state, for example, or speaking about such terrorist groups as uh, people uh, only want al-Jihad to have their uh, 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 Islamic state. This is really wrong. I can't expect or do believe that such terrorist people uh, really have any uh, 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 Islam background can kill these, uh, the honest people on such a uh, uh, horrific way. So first of all, those are not Muslims. And we should definitely, I guess you are from, our, uh, you did serve in our area and you know the complication situation. It, we should, we should really think how can we find a solution. I would say for Japan, for example, you, uh, you have very good background on politics and, and diplomacy. Your relations is very important with other nations, whether uh, uh, for uh, economic reason or for uh, your, uh, 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 your powerful uh, state. So I would say you should use this policy in order to try to find uh, a solution for uh, you know, solving our problem. For example, the wrong policies 
this because of the US and some other uh, uh, Europe uh, wrong policy against Syria or Iraq, this is what we are facing. Economic sanctions, interfering, uh, supporting uh, some of these extremist groups. This is what we are facing. And this is what we uh, expect from Japan, actually, to have a, a very important role, political role. And I agree with you, using military uh, in our area, it is a very dangerous because unfortunately they are using the Islam in order to achieve Excuse secularism. Me. I'm you. sorry, but the time is running out. So yeah, can you just wrap up your question? Uh, to be honest, I don't have a question. But uh, <laughs> only okay. yeah, That's what I thought. Okay. I'm sorry, yeah. To clarify That's the situation from our part okay. and also to... Yeah, I'm I sorry. take your point. I take okay. your point. But you uh, we could have done that in 2012. We could have done that. But, you know... At that time, um, I shouldn't say this, but uh, you know, I, I went to Washington and I talked to my friends. Why, why, why you want to topple uh, Assad regime? This is a key to the stability in that part of the world, whether you like it or not. And I'm not, I'm, I'm not government official. I'm not talking about policy, but I'm a, as an analyst of uh, stability in that part of the world. Uh, we shouldn't change uh, the regime. Uh, unfortunately, it's ironic. It's an irony. The biggest <laughs> irony I, I have ever seen in my life is that you need dictatorship to have peace. This is the biggest irony I have ever had. OK, uh, I have to receive the final question from the gentleman yes. in the front. Short question, please. First of all, thank you very much. I'm ambassador of Belarus to Japan and at the same time scientist. This way for me it was very interesting to consider all situation and activities. You are quite right because it's quite necessary to coordinate efforts. But it concerns not only terrorism. Of course it concerns a lot of problems around the world nowadays because all these problems are close connected to each other. It's not possible to divide terrorism against security against warming and so on. This way, the main idea how it will be necessary to coordinate efforts, first of all, between big powers. Nowadays, they, of course, are trying to do something, but level is very weak. It's quite necessary to coordinate efforts practically. And uh, for this, it's necessary to have a world policy. What do you think about the possibility? How it will be possible to create such policy together, especially together with Japan. Thank you very much. Well, I, I, I take your point, a good question, but my answer is very pessimistic. Uh, you know, in uh, looking back, the days of the Cold War was much more stable, peaceful, and the demise of the Soviet Union prevented, uh, in a sense, the Cold War prevented uh, the ugly European nationalism from resurrecting. But now the Cold War is uh, gone, and all kinds of nasty, ugly, violent nationalisms in Europe are back. And something similar is happening in Asia as well. So we may miss those good old days of uh, during the Cold War, because we are entering a definitely a much more dangerous, unstable uh, era of the human being. Probably this is more natural <laughs> to us than uh, the uh, days in the Cold War. Thank you. Okay, uh, I'm very sorry, but it's time to close uh, today's briefing session. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Miyake. Thank you.